while, really. With great power comes great responsibility. Of course, this section has been impacting Christianity. And we've, we've had a lot of fun with it. I hopefully learned a lot of things. But today, they, next week, we'll start something new. The great power that we have, this faith that we have, the responsibility that we have with it. Once we realize that, then I think it's really time for us to wake up. And realize that this responsibility, this power, this response, that's a huge thing. The most important thing. So today, the church awakens. <coughs> I would love to tell you that I created this slide, but for somehow, somebody else stole my idea, alright? <laughs> I thought the church awakened sounded pretty good. <laughs> Evidently, somebody else did too that could make these things. Anyway, the church awakens. But we do have to wake up, don't we? We have a responsibility. And if you don't realize that, then it's time to really splash some cold water on your face and think about how important it is. Our faith. All the responsibilities we've talked about. Let's just review a, a few of them. We have a responsibility to grow the spirit, the truth, and knowledge in our faith. We have the responsibility to share, and not just to share our finances and our work, but share the good news. That's the kind of responsibility I'm talking about, the good news that, that is Jesus. That is a huge responsibility. We have one to our community. I think that we have a responsibility to know who is in our community and what we can do to help them when it comes down to it. The bottom line is we want to show them Jesus. We have a responsibility to be an everyday Christian every single day. Consistent obedience. We've got a responsibility, remember this one, to cast the net again. Remember Jesus said to the disciples out on that boat, they hadn't caught anything. He said, cast the net again on the other side. What have you tried? What can we do? What can we do different? I don't know, but we've got to continue to cast that net to our community. We've got to continue to reach out to people. We need to be fishers of men. We've also got a responsibility to pick up our cross and follow him. Now, it's one thing to say we got to do these things. Now, let's just do it. We've got to hit the streets. We've got to hit wherever we're going. Uh, whether, whether it's your, your home or your work or at play. We've got to live that Christian life and take advantage or take these responsibilities serious and take advantage of every situation. Because the last thing we want to do with our faith is get sleepy. Start to get a little tired. Are you? Are, are you getting sleepy? Are you feeling drowsy today? Anybody about ready to fall asleep? Raise your hands on a little bit point out here just a little bit. Nobody? Nobody? Just Scott. All right. <laughs> now, today would not be the day to fall asleep. Just saying. We'll get to more of that here in just a second. But, but sometimes I get sleepy too. Right? I can tell you, there's been times when I've gone, and the, the, the beauty about putting these on the internet, I can't tell you names, I can't tell you what the situation is, but I can tell you that there has been a time in my life where I've sat in front of an old preacher who has gone on for an hour, and started to feel drowsy. And I look around, and eh, so is everybody else, right? Hopefully that doesn't happen to you today. I'm not talking about that, though. I'm talking about with your faith, with your conviction, with your commitment to Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the responsibilities that we have. Do you get tired of them? Do you get bored with your faith? Do you? Has that ever happened to you where you're just like, yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian, I got faith. Eh. <coughs> Complacency about your faith? It's something we got to be careful of. Remember, remember the, uh, uh, the term drowsy faith. Because that's really what this section of the sermon is about. What we need to wake up from, church. We don't want to have that, 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 that drowsy faith. It's dangerous. Remember the parable of the sower. That, that when Jesus told it, as an example, he, he said, what about that farmer that scatters the seeds? I know a lot of you guys know way more about that than I do. What happened to the seeds? Some fell on the path. Some fell on rocky soil. Some fell on the thorns. And some fell on good soil. We, we talked about that before at depth, for sure. But when we start getting sleepy with our faith, I think we really get ourselves in danger of being withered. Being on that, that, 
rocky soil. What happens to that plant? It springs up. It springs up fast and then the, the roots aren't deep and it withers away. What happens to that, uh, that, that seed that fell in the thorns? Well, it grows, but then those thorns, it, it chokes it out. And when we start getting drowsy faith, we start getting into a situation where we're in danger of that. Whether it's that withered plant or whether it's the one that gets choked out. We are in danger of that. Because what happens to the one that's on good soil? Well, it grows, doesn't it? Its roots go deep. What happens though? If you've got a plant out in your yard, and you're, maybe you're, you're trying to grow a garden, you've got to tend it. You can't just leave it out there. What if there's a drought? What if it doesn't rain for a couple weeks? Well, what if the, you've planted it in the wrong spot? What if? Well, it starts to die. It might wither. Other things might... Yeah, look, my garden, let me tell you, there's weeds in it. Big time. <clears throat> Big time. I do my best, but yeah, that, that happens. And if I don't eventually get out there and take them down, what's going to happen? They're going to choke that plant. The same is true with us in our, in our faith. If we don't continually, continually say, I've got to continue to go to church. I've got to continue to learn. I've got to take my responsibilities as a Christian seriously. <clears throat> we can easily end up being a withered plant. Or finding ourselves being led astray. So what do we got to say? Wake up. We don't want to be sleepy Christians with drowsy faith. How can you talk about being sleepy without talking about Eutychus? Oh, Eutychus. Listening to Paul. Remember I was telling you, listening to an, an old preacher. Uh, really good guy, too. And it's helped me out a lot. And, no, it's not my dad. <laughs> Throw that out there. Listening to an old preacher, and we just start falling asleep. Too. Can you imagine Eutychus that night? Paul was leaving the next day, so he decided to preach all through the night and into the morning. And if I did that, you guys might fall asleep. I like to think I'm interesting and that you're learning stuff, but after a while, your voice would probably start to sound the same. <coughs> and you start to feel your head nod. And next thing I know, I'd have a bunch of sleepy people. And then I'd slap this, and you guys would wake up and act like nothing happened, right? I went to sleep. So you can so Paul went on and on and on. And the scripture says that the candles were flickering. It was just kind of nice, relaxing, you know. Everything was just starting to feel drowsy and sleepy. But the thing about falling asleep, if you fall asleep where you are, you might fall on a padded pew. Eutychus was in the windowsill of the third floor. And he falls asleep and falls out of that window and dies. He died. And right, right in front of Paul, right in front of all these people who are listening to Paul preach all through the night. And look, this is the Apostle Paul. It happens. Eutychus got sleepy and fell. What did Paul going to do? Paul got up and he said, hey, we're going to wake him up. And he raised him from the dead. Now, what a testimony that must have been to everybody that saw that event happen that day. And Eutychus woke up. Now think about, imagine, the kids, think about this. Imagine what Eutychus was able to go and tell his friends at school the next day. Imagine what he was able to say the rest of his life that he had experienced that day. I have a sneaking suspicion that Eutychus woke up that day, but not only physically, I have a feeling his faith woke up. I don't know, but scripture doesn't say where his faith was, but I bet it was even stronger after that event. What about us? We have to have our faith wake up. If you have started to be complacent, wake up. The last thing that we want to do is to start to fall off. Because if we do, if we start to get complacent with our faith, we say, well, we're, we're, we're fine, whatever, and we don't cultivate that soil, we will fall asleep. And we may just fall, just like Eutychus did. So instead, like I think Eutychus did after this event, I think that we need to have ferocious faith. I'm talking about the kind of faith that is strong, that we know that we have got uh, just, grr, I'm strong in my faith. I love the Lord and I'm going to live it every single day. Proverbs. Chapter 28, 
verse 1. Gabe, this one's in your all's uh, bulletin. Hope you guys enjoy that. Parents, check up on them later today. See, see what they did. See if they learned something. They should be asking you a few questions as well. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 1 says, The righteous are as bold as a lion. Now let's think about what a lion's going to do out in the wild. If it wants to walk into a room, into an area, it will. It's the king of the jungle. It's not afraid of things. It makes things afraid. It is bold. And that's the kind of faith that the scripture says we need to have. If we are righteous, if we are doing the right thing, we should definitely be bold. Like enough to say to anybody, anywhere that we ever meet, I believe in Jesus Christ. And what about 1 Corinthians chapter 16, 13, and 14? Be on guard. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. When you stand firm in the faith, folks, you do everything with love. And we know that we have nothing to fear. So I think like that bold lion. And I think like the courage and the faith that we have that 1 Corinthians talks about. I think that we need to show our faith. How are we going to show our faith? Well, we're going to use an alliteration today. A triple A. We're going to use first action. Doing the right thing. Obedience. Matthew 5.16 says, Let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now let's take note of what that action was. It doesn't say, uh, do everything so all can see, so everyone will say, how great a Christian you are. It doesn't say, do all these good things, so that people will look at you as the church all-star. It's not what it says at all, does it? Do it so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. To God be the glory. That's the kind of faith we need to have. That's the kind of faith in action that we need to have. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's not about our glory. It's about reaching people for Christ. And that all comes back down to our responsibility. So we're, we want to show our faith in action. Obediently. Next, the next A, we want to show our faith in attitude. How is your attitude about life, about the church, most importantly, about your faith? Because if you have a good attitude in faith, man, oh man, nothing can stop you. You will be bold, you will be bold like that line with your faith, with your righteousness. If you have a good attitude with your faith and you are confident, you are going to show in action, without a doubt, kindness. Mark Twain said this, kindness is a language that the deaf can hear and the blind can see. I've looked at that quote for a long time. In fact, it's sat on my desk now for the last year. It just thought about it. And then as I started to prepare this sermon this week, I looked over and I saw that and I said, that's it. Eureka. That aha moment that we need to have when we wake up in our faith. And kindness is an act that everybody understands. They say music is a, uh, the language that everyone understands because music's the same wherever you go. You write it the same all across the world. But you know what else is and even more powerful? Kindness. Not everybody can read music but you understand when someone's being kind to you. And like we've talked about so many times before, when we see kindness, oftentimes the first thing that I think is, I bet that person knows the Lord. I bet they've got Jesus in their heart. That attitude is something that we need to show our faith in every day. Finally, the third day, we need to have faith ferociously in announcements. That doesn't mean that when we go and we come and do our announcements, we talk about the fact that we're going to Briar Patch this Tuesday. Seniors, don't forget to sign up. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's not how I'm going to show my faith. I'm talking about the kind of announcements. Here's the definition for announcements. A written or spoken statement that tells people about something. Maybe it's a card. Maybe it's a letter. Maybe if you write articles, like I, I have to sometimes, Maria makes me, right? Maybe it's through that. Maybe it's through your word, your spoken word or statement. 
that tells people about something. Folks, that's called evangelism. When you tell somebody about Jesus, we need to show our faith in that. In word, in deed, or in action, attitude, and announcements. We need to proclaim it, we need to tell it, and we need to not hesitate like that ferocious lion to make sure that people know, I believe in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. You guys are awake, right? Amen. Because we're getting to the real good part here. We're going to say, with this, with this knowledge that we have, our action, our attitude, and right now, our announcements, our evangelism, tell you, we are going to stay on target. We know what our target is. We know where we need to look. We know where we need to focus our lives. We know that through the good book and following what it says, we can stay on target on that path of righteousness. We can stay on target with our action, our attitude, and our announcements. We can wake up in the faith and really start to wake up as a church to realize the potential we have in our own community. In our own community. If only we don't make it about ourselves and realize and wake up about what the true thing that we're supposed to do here is, y'all. This is salvation. This is eternal life. It's not about songs or pews or anything that you want here in our building. It's not about just us. It's about our responsibility to reach people for Jesus Christ. We're talking about forever. Forever. Not just right now. Not just today. Not just, I didn't like this or that. I don't care. Heads up on that. I don't care. Don't, don't even talk to me about any kind of complaints or any kind of issues unless we're talking about reaching people for Christ. Because if it's anything else, you are off target. Off target. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. Ladies and gentlemen, God has given us a ministry here at Hartford Christian Church. He has asked us to carry out this ministry. He has given us instructions that we need to keep in our targets at all times. We need to keep a clear head about it. We need to think, what can we do? We need to have a plan. We need to have a strategy. And we need to implement what we need to do. To do what? Do what? Work at telling others the good news. That is our responsibility. And that responsibility gives us great power. <clears throat> what about Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch? You can find this in Acts chapter 8, verse 26 through 40. What a good story. We're talking about a guy who went out to evangelize, to tell people the good news. And what was his strategy? Action, attitudes, and announcements. Scripture says that the Spirit said that, that Philip, he, he said to go over to this guy who was sitting in this carriage and he's reading the Scripture. He's reading the book of Isaiah, trying to learn about God. And the Spirit says, go over to him. Kids, I know you're going to like to write this one down. The adult's going to write it down too. What was Philip's attitude? He was excited. When you have the opportunity to tell somebody about Jesus, are you excited or are you scared? If there's one thing that everyone thinks about this week, I want you to think about that. When I have this opportunity, am I excited or am I scared? Philip didn't know the eunuch. Philip was not on the same... Uh, Class, you know, upper middle, lower class, as this unit. This guy's upper class. Philip is just some preacher. But what does he do? He was excited. So what did he do? Kind of sneak over, kind of say, uh, "Excuse me, sir." No, he ran. He ran. He was so excited that he ran. Now listen. If you know that there's an opportunity out there. Right now, I'm not saying you literally have to run over. You might want to walk or drive. But you should be excited about it. You should be so excited about it that you don't put it off. You don't wait. And when you realize how important this faith is, and when you wake up to realizing what our true mission is outside these walls, I don't think that you will hesitate. Have that excitement. Run. Run. So, Philip's plan. 
he sees an open door. He is told an open door. The Spirit says, look, here's an open door. And he takes advantage of that opportunity. So, strategize. We have opportunity here. We have opportunity with us here today. We have opportunity to strengthen and build each other up. We have an opportunity to study every single day of our lives. We have an opportunity in our community. There are people out there that don't know the Lord. That bothers me. I'm pretty sure it bothers you. And it's not, look, there's so many churches that are like, we've got to reach this demographic. We're going to go for kids. We're going to go for young adults. We're going to go for uh, fathers that have kids. We're going to go, look, we are a community church. You know, I see these signs that say, we're not your dad. You're not your grandma's church. We are your grandma's church and your dad's and your son's and your child's. We are a community church. So I see people out there that are lost. I see senior citizens that are lost. I see adults that are lost. And I see kids that have never really heard about the Lord. We need to take advantage of the opportunities, any opportunity that we see, to tell them. To tell them. So, to teach them. I'll we'll say that. We've got to take advantage of the opportunity to teach them. And sometimes we have to generate those opportunities, and you know it as well as I do. In fact, I think that oftentimes we need to, on a personal level, generate opportunities more. And definitely as a church, continue to try our hardest to generate opportunities to teach people about Him. But it also comes back down to our responsibility, because to teach, we have to know. So we've got to learn ourselves. We've got to be able to say, I need to learn and I've never known enough and I'm not going to be complacent with my faith and I'm not going to be that withered plant. I'm going to continue to grow because I'm going to continue to read and study and go to church and to pray and to do my best. <laughs> Finally, the baptize. That was Philip's strategy. Take advantage of the opportunity, teach and lead them to knowing that to accept Christ and be baptized is what it takes for salvation. Acts chapter 8, verse 37. Mm. You can. Uh, uh, yes, you can, right? That's what he said to him. Uh, the eunuch says, can I be baptized? And in 837, Philip says, yes, you can. If, if you believe with all your heart, what did the eunuch say? I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. Amen. Yes, you can. Have you not gone through baptism yet? Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? If you haven't, that is your next step. That's what we do next. And that's what the eunuch was going to do. Build strategy. Number one thing. Yes, opportunity. Yes, teach. Yes, baptize. But number one thing, you better be excited about the good news that we have. And that is the last responsibility I'll tell you about that we'll add to it. That's part of the attitude. We have the responsibility to be excited about what we know. So I think that when we are excited and we see someone who has learned because we've had an opportunity to teach him and is baptized, accepts the Lord, I think that's awesome, don't you? I think that is really, really awesome. Whenever we see our pews start to fill up because we've reached people for Christ, I think that's awesome. Whenever we see people learning about Jesus, I think that is awesome. So you know what, church? Wake up. Wake up. When's the last time you told somebody new about Jesus? There is opportunities out there. I promise you there are. Glenda Henry took one the other day. I didn't tell you I was going to pick on you, but what, if you haven't noticed, I'm missing some stuff here today. The handlebar mustache is gone. If you weren't here on Wednesday night, you might not have realized I had it. All right? And Glenda showed some friends on Facebook. Look at my preacher. What did that do? Opened the door, didn't it? That opened the door. I'm sorry. I know some of y'all liked it. So she didn't, so. <laughs> I opened the door and said, you all come to our church. We have fun. We have fun learning about Jesus. We have fun as a church family because we feel so warm together. Because we feel welcome. Wake up, church. When's the last time you had the attitude and the action and announced the fact that you were a follower of Jesus Christ. Wake up, Christians. All around the world. Wake up. 
The responsibility we have is not about what we want here. The responsibility we have is what we're supposed to be doing out there. Wake up, Christians. Revelations chapter 22, verse 12. I read this one earlier. Look, I am coming soon. Bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. That should probably uh, light a spark in our heel, shouldn't it? He's coming soon. Not, I'm coming, but you'll never know because it's way too far down the road. I mean, this is 2,000 years ago he said this. I'm coming soon, bringing my reward. We got to be ready, like we talked about last week. So to be ready, we better wake up and recognize our responsibilities. But boy, oh boy, what a great reward it's going to be. 1 Corinthians 15, 34. And the King James Version says, Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Like I just mentioned a little bit ago. There's seniors. There's adults. There's kids that don't know the Lord within blocks of here. I'm ashamed of that. We've got work to do, church. We have work to do. And I sure hope that if anything through this series, that we recognize the great power we have, that we recognize the responsibility that we have, and we will not take it lightly. I sure hope that through this series, we've realized that, yes, you can do these things. But the most important thing we better recognize is that God is with us. We can't do it on our own. We've got to look to Him. Church family, when we look to God, when we look to God, and we trust Him, and we trust our faith, and we know what we're supposed to do, you better believe we're going to wake up. Can you please bow with me? Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You so very, very much for this day that we've had to come together to worship to say thank you. To acknowledge our responsibilities. Lord, we know that there's people that we even know that don't know you. Lord, we're sorry that we haven't done a better job to show them your love, your actions and, and attitude by telling them. Lord, we ask that you will help us with that. Help us to be excited. Help us to to really want to share what we have. Lord, I know that we all fall short sometimes on that. Help us, Lord, to, to get back up and to try again. Running full speed ahead, knowing that you will come soon. But Lord, even, even though we know you're coming soon, help us not to be afraid, because we know that our faith in you means that you're bringing a reward for us. Lord, we love you so very, very much. And although sometimes we don't show it the way that we should, we ask, Lord, you will help us to show it more. We, we know, Lord, that our community needs us to stand united as a church, ready to show your love, your word. Lord, just now I ask that you will bless us. Strengthen us. Lord, give us the courage that we need to boldly go and share our faith. Lord, I ask all these things in your Son, Jesus, whose redeeming blood has saved us. We ask it in his name.